So we are starting accident modeling and prevention. What is our learning objective, objective through this uh, topic? We want to study how to model accidents and how to design and adopt uh, safety measures. In order to adopt the safety measures, it is very important we should know how the accidents are happening. And that's what uh, accident models be, gives us the information about. What is the outline in next uh, three or four uh, lectures? We will be working on this, so it is important you understand what is the outline of uh, accident modeling topic. We will uh, study about uh, some process accident. We will study what are the classifications of accidents and what are the accident causes and the models available which can help us to identify the root causes and what are the different techniques that we use in uh, identifying the accidents and the latest approaches about process models. Now, before I jump into the accident modeling, it is very important that you understand what is an accident. So accident uh, has some characteristics that need to be defined. It is an uh, event or the activity that is uh, the short rather than slow developing. It is sudden. This is very important uh, point in accident modeling. It happens, uh, accident happens without any warning. It is unwanted, of course, and it is unexpected. It is uncontrollable event that leads to undesirable injury, loss of life, loss of damage uh, or the system, property or the environment. These are the things, of course, which are undesirable to us. As a risk and safety engineer, this is your job to make sure we don't meet these kind of things. So one more time, accident is the short rather than slow developing. It is sudden. It is unwanted. It is unexpected and it is uncontrollable event that leads to undesirable injury, loss of life, damage to system, property or environment. An accident process facility caused by process malfunctioning in, is termed as process accident. By process facility, I mean to say oil and gas sectors, uh, chemical industries, uh, offshore and onshore, both oil and gas industries and other industries where the processing is happening. Now, as I mentioned, uh, accident is uh, a sudden and unexpected event, which leads to undesirable events. So an incorrect decision making in the business leading to the loss of revenue is not an accident. So if you make a decision in your business and there is a loss, it is not an accident. Why? Because that loss is not coming sudden. And somehow you can expect that you can face the loss in your business. So this is not classified uh, as an accident. The term accident uh, is something which is a technical term in safety and risk engineering, whereas uh, in newspaper maybe someone who is writing a non-technical content you might see they get confused it with accident and incident so the term accident has been used uh, mainly as a common denominator for the set of the phenomena that is of interest which includes critical accidents uh, incident and mishap so in safety and risk engineering accident and incident both are different and they have the particular definitions which will come to next couple of slides other than these two we also use the word in safety and risk engineering which we call as a near miss so near miss is uh, a situation where we could have uh, received the injuries or damage but we did not so near miss situation must also be addressed events which did not result in injury just keep in mind, near miss uh, does not result in injury or damage, but it had the potential to do so. For example, there was a water on the floor and 
you could have slipped on that water, but you did not. So it does have the potential to cause damage or injury if you get slip on it. So that is called as a near miss. You were able to save yourself, but uh, hazard, which is the spilled water on the floor, of course, it still has the potential to make a damage or injury. Folks, am I going too fast or please uh, let me know in the message box if I'm going too fast. Okay, so I'm okay, I can go, thank you. You need to understand this accident concept. So things are always good, the operational things, they are working and they transform into uh, bad things, which we don't want, of course. This transformation from good to the bad is what we see how this transform, transform happen. However, the measurement or the monitoring is what this is the route. So this is one route that the good can be transferred into the bad. This is uh, another route. This is, these are different routes. However, when we do the accident modeling, this is what uh, we must model, that a direct change from good to bad things. That's what our model helps to predict us. So there are three things in accident process. The first is the initiation, the event that starts the accident. The second one is the propagation, the event or events that maintain or expand the accident. And the third one is the termination, the event or the events that stop the accident or diminish in its size. Now, in order to remember this, I'm going to give you a very simple example. This example we will study when we will do fire modeling, of course. So there's a thing that we call as a fire triangle. So in the fire triangle, we have our fuel on one point. On the second point, uh, we have uh, our ignition source. Ignition source. And on the third one, we have our air. It is basically the oxygen which is uh, being used in the combustion process. So whenever these three points get in contact, we get our fire. This is the fire. Now, whenever you call the fire brigade or you try to extinguish uh, fire, basically you are trying to break uh, any connection between these three. For example, if you try to cover a fire with a very thick cloth, you are trying to bake the connection between fuel and the air. And because the fire triangle will break between fuel and the air, there will be no more fire. Or you can try to break uh, between air and ignition source, the supply of the air and the ignition source. Once the fire triangle will break from this point even, the connection between these two, there will be no more fire. The same is true with this one. The fuel, the connection between fuel and ignition source, once it is broken, there will be no more fire. So let's say the fire brigades comes and they use the water. So they are trying to create a layer between the fuel and the air. It will be the water layer, of course, just to break this side of the fire triangle. Now let's come back to our accident process. What was the initiation? Initiation was all these three combines and the fire start to happen. What is my accident in this case? This is my fire. Now propagation means as long as the fuel supply is there, this event will keep going. Or the air supply is there, this event will keep going. But if it is a, a fire outside, there's a plenty of the air. It is difficult to imagine that we will run out of the air. So the only thing is that we can run out of the fuel and that's what will stop our propagation. Now the termination, as I said, 
we try to break our fire triangle so that we can stop the fire. So these are three processes that happen in an accident process. When we will go in next lectures, you will see how important these three things are. Folks, I will definitely take your questions. Uh, just keep them with you. Once I'm done with the lecture, I will allow you to ask your questions. Now, in accident process, we have initiation, propagation, and termination. Now, understanding how accident evolves, this is the important word here, from the initiating events to their propagating effects to the final consequences, is paramount in designing safety into the system. You cannot introduce the safety into your system until and unless you understand how these three were evolved from initiating event to the propagation and to the termination or the final consequences. In accident uh, process concepts, we have a sa safe uh, state, as I mentioned, the safety, good thing. And we have the bad thing, which is called the accident. In safety and risk engineering, safety uh, accident is defined as the event that causes fatality or fatalities. So we lost human lives. That's what we classify as the accident. In between these things, we have near miss, we have mishap, and we have incident. We do have particular definitions for each and every one here. For near miss, the event did not that did not result any injury, but has the potential to do so. Now there is another thing which is the mishap, the event that caused minor impact to the property, people and environment. I will just take an example of the water spill which I mentioned previously. So there was a water on the floor. You could slip it, but you did not. That's a near miss. But as I said, hazard, which is the water or spill water, hazard is still there. So we can have a mishap. Someone was going to slip it, but uh, he just gets some minor impact uh, to him. Now, the third is the incident, the event that caused considerable harm or loss. That is what called as the incident. Whereas uh, accident is classified as the fatalities. Whenever we have fatalities, we will classify that event as a accident. When we have a loss without fatalities, that's what we identify as. Uh. Folks, all these events, either it is safe, near miss, mishap, incident, or accident, this is what we call as the severity levels. In order to understand the causes of the accident, you must uh, understand that accident cannot attribute to a single cause. There is no one reason for an accident. It is the failure or the mistake caused by the occurrence of the chain of errors. So combination of uh, events uh, leads to an accident and not a single cause. Process accidents are mainly caused by three factors. These are the three factors. It could be because of uh, unsafe act. It could be because of unsafe condition. It could be a uh, management and organization failure. In next couple of slides, I will explain these in more details with some examples for you to understand. In unsafe uh, act, any act that deviates from a general recognized safe way, that is what is classified as uh, unsafe act. This is the act. Or specified method of doing the job and increase the potential for an accident or the activities that contribute to accidents. Now, because this is an act, it will include some operation. Someone is operating something. So it is the operating without work permit. This is an act. So it is an unsafe act because he, the person or the operator is working without a work permit or inadequate work permit. The person operator don't have a work permit, but he is working in a particular area in the industry. 
operating an unsafe uh, speed. A poor maintenance or the error due to the maintenance, adopting unsafe position or po posture, and the human factors. These are all examples of your unsafe act. So act means something which is related to person who is doing that job. If it is a state, this is called as the unsafe condition. So any physical state which deviates from what is acceptable, normal or correct in terms of its past product, uh, production or potential future production of personal injury and or damage to the property. So it was not happening because of uh, lack of training of the person, but it was due to the machinery on which operator was working. So for example, it is the unguarded machinery. So this is an unsafe condition because this is related to the machinery. It is related to a condition. This is the condition. Even if a person has a training to do his job on that machinery, but it was not un, uh, it was not guarded, so he can he's working in an unsafe condition. Similarly, it could be unsafe uh, designed equipment. It could be poor housekeeping, congestion, unsafe processes, hot, humid, or noisy environment. So anything which is related to not related to act or the person is classified as an unsafe condition. Now in all of these two, two unsafe act and unsafe conditions, we have the third one which is called as the management and organizations failure. This is this plays a very big role in accidents in industries. The results uh, or the unsafe event could be because of the poor management, uh, safety policies which comes from the management, poor decision makings, inadequate uh, safety programs, inadequate supervision and training, and inadequate communication. It's a lead, it could be the leadership failure, and it could be inadequate management job and improper management behavior. This uh, management and organization failure most of you are engineers, I believe, in this class. So you are the one who reach at one point on the management uh, decision making process and lead to all of this. In order to investigate uh, an accident, we use some uh, predictive models. No one knows about the future, but we can make some models which can predict uh, the outcomes. So this is what uh, we understand through these models that we can predict the causes of accidents in complex systems and to develop uh, preventive strategies to mitigate the occurrence. Accident models provide a conceptualization of the characteristics of the accident, which typically show the relation between causes and effects. So we need to know what was the reason that this accident happened. And by effects, it means to say what are the outcomes? What are the outcomes of this accident? If something happened unusual in an operation, what could be the possible outcome? Can it be catastrophic? or it will be a near miss or uh, it will be an incident so the accident model explain why and how the accident occur and are used as a technique for risk assessment during system design and development now these are uh, three classification that we identify our accident models on the first is the sequential, epidemiological, and systematic. I will go into the details one by one. In terms of the sequential accident models, the simplest this is the simplest type of the accident model that describes the accident as the result of the sequence of events that occur in a specified order. 
Now with the, this word sequential, you can identify that uh, these event will happen in a sequence. Now in general, these kind of the models, they follow a hypothesis, which uh, it says that the occurrence of the injury inevitably results from a completed sequence of factors that last one of these being the accident itself. The accident in turn is invariably caused or permitted by the unsafe act. This is the cause we studied before and or, or the mechanical or the physical hazard. This is the unsafe condition. So we have act here and we have unsafe condition here. A sudden unexpected event initiates a sequence of uh, consequences where the last one is the accident. So once the sequence of events starts, the final outcome could be an accident. One of the model, process model that we have in sequential accident model is the domino theory, which was proposed by Henrich. In the domino theory, it considers uh, five factors, social environment, fault of the person, which is unsafe uh, acts, and the mechanical failure, physical hazards, accidents, and injury. Because that's a domino theory, he provided us uh, this picture for these accidents. Now, these are the dominoes. As you can see, this is the domino for our social environment and incentive. This is the domino for the fault of the person. This is the domino for the unsafe act. This domino is for your injury and accident. As I said, the last event will be an accident. As you can see the initiating event, let's say social environment and incendiary, it fall down. Because of this failure, the failure of the next one happened because that's a domino effect. One failure will lead to another one. And this is what is the sequential theory says. And then it caused the failure of unsafe event. And then it caused injury which results into an accident. Now, according to this uh, theory, First three types, social, environment, and incentive, fault of the person, which could be the carelessness of uh, operator, and unsafe act or the condition, these are classified as the mistakes of human. Or technically in engineering, shift and risk engineering, we call them as human error. As I mentioned in the domino theory, because it's a sequential event, the injuries are caused by the preceding factors because that's in the domino. By removing the unsafe factor or the hazard condition, the action of these preceding factors is negated and the accident or the injuries can be prevented. Allow me to go back and explain you this point there, please. So, for example, there was a failure of uh, social environment and a century. And this causes the failure of the fault of the person. However, if we try to save our unsafe conditions, this might not lead to the, the injury and the, the accident. So this is what uh, it meant to say. By removing the unsafe act or the hazardous condition, the action of these preceding factors is negated and the accidents or injuries can be prevented. Now, the example which I gave you is for unsafe act unsafe act however it can be any point here even if you can stop if you can stop leading injuries to the accident that can also prevent accident if you can stop uh, leading from social environment and century to the fault of the person this can also save us from reaching to accident element three unsafe act or mechanical is probably the easiest factor to remove More example for sequential models, uh, we have ILCA model, which is the loss causation model, accident evaluation and uh, barriers. 
So sequential models need, of course, not to be limited to a single sequence of events, but may include a representation of multiple sequence of events in the form of hierarchies, such as traditional tree uh, models and the network. The famous one out of these is the fall tree analysis. This is what your topic in the next lecture, of course. In the PERT uh, analysis, uh, program evaluation and review techniques, these are mostly the management management levels. And these two are for the engineering based uh, techniques, fall tree and petri networks. The second type of the accident models are epidemiological models. Epidemiological model describes an accident analogous to the spreading of disease. So let's take an example of the COVID. Uh, it is easier to correlate, I believe. As the outcome of the combination of the factors, some manifest and some latent, which are management practices in industries that happen to exist together in space and time. So epidemiological accident model says that it is the accident is the combination of uh, some outcomes and some latent factors, most likely the management practices that uh, coexist and the accident happens. So it could be because of the performance uh, deviations, how the production system gradually deteriorates from normal state into state of where an accident occurs. It could be the environmental conditions. It could be some barriers. We can provide some barriers to stop uh, unexpected events. So the barriers prevent the unexpected consequences from occurring and which is uh, in a sense could stop the development of accident at the last moment. Now, if you remember my example of uh, fire triangle. So once you try to break uh, the triangle from here between oxygen and the fuel supply, this water that uh, you are using, it is what is called as a barrier. That's what is your barrier. So we try to prevent the unexpected uh, consequences from occurring. The latent failure present within system well before the onset of recognizable accident sequence. If the famous model in epidemiological accident are the Swiss cheese model. Now in the last type of the model, which is the systemic accident model, these models describe the characteristics on the system level rather than on the level of a specific uh, cause effect mechanism or even epidemiological factors. So in the first type, we study that it was the cause effect analysis. In the second one, it was epidemiological. In the third one, we define our models based on the characteristics of the system. In the system model, an accident occurs when several causal factors, such as human, technical, and environment exist coincidentally in a specified time and space. So all these factors, either human, technical, and environment, they should coexist in a specific time and space. Very famous example for uh, systemic accident model or the STEM, which is the systems theoretic accident model and processes. Thing you need to keep in mind that uh, these models, they are different types of the accident models. However, it does not mean that one is better than others. It's just uh, based on the applications uh, and different criteria that we set for each uh, model, the limitations of the models. Sequences model are simple and easy to represent graphically because we can represent them in a sequence, which facilitates communication of the results. It is uh, unable to explain accident in a more complex situation. So this word uh, limits your sequential models. If it is a complex uh, situation, we can't apply this model. So we have to look for some other type. Sequential and epidemiological accident model represent thinking of clear cause effect links. Now, what is our objective again? 
we want to identify what is the source of the accident. And once we identify the source, we can provide some safety measurement to either reduce or eliminate that accident. So the accident causal models help identify the source of accident and ultimately reduce or eliminate the accident. Accident process model describe the accident sequence and help to analyze less severe events such as incident, mishap, and near miss. Accident models are helpful to model the accident process to understand the factors that contribute to the accident and steps that can be taken to avoid them. Folks, uh, this is the model uh, which is important uh, from the process industry's point of view. It's a CURLS model. This model is based on the sequence of the decisions and action that lead up to an accident. CURLS uh, does not uh, directly use the accident model but utilizes an accident causation chain in which the accident is placed. I will explain in my next slide uh, what does uh, the causation chain means in which the accident is placed at the top and the sequence of the events leading to it is developed beneath it. So this is the way you structure this model, CURLS model. So you have accident uh, which is placed at the top and the sequence of events leading to it is developed beneath. As an example, uh, I will come back to this one. This is the event here. So this is my accident. Uh, this is my event here. This is my accident. And these are the reasons which were leading to the accident. So he assign uh, each event to one of the three layers. One is the immediate technical recommendation, or it could be avoiding the hazard, or it could be improving the management system. So these are the three layers which he believed can be provided to an accident. In the chain diagram, which I just showed you, the events assigned to one of these layers may come at any point and may be intervened with events assigned to the other two layers. So how you develop uh, this model? We have three layers, remember. The first layer is the technical recommendation. So by that I mean to say we can provide some technical recommendation to avoid that accident or I must say it should be your condition. You change uh, your conditions on this. In the second layer, we avoid uh, the hazards. So conditions uh, are there. Uh, conditions are all good and there is no unsafe effect. So the only possibility that we can uh, prevent uh, or mitigate is to avoid the hazard. The third layer is the improve the management systems. So how you develop this model, you put your accident on the top and then you identify the causes. And next to those causes, for example, uh, let's say for this event, you, you identify from your understanding that it should adopt uh, first layer. And for this one, let's say you said you, you adopt your third layer. So it is based on the event. For example, you find out that uh, here the there is a poor management system. Poor management system. So as a recommendation, you identify that uh, you should use your third layer, which is improving the management system. One thing, if you are investigating uh, or applying this uh, CURLS model, and your colleague is doing it, this model does not uh, have to be exactly the same between both of you. There is a possibility that uh, your friend thinks that some of the event may come at any point and it may be intervened with the events assigned to the other two layers. So no two person can have the same answer, but the objective is that we identify the causes of the accident here. And then we put our recommendation to prevent or mitigate it.
this is uh, one of the example uh, which I took from the work. So as you can see that this was uh, my accident, which is the drain catches the fire. Now we go back and try to identify the causes here. So the causes was the hole burnt in the sheet by bending sparks. What is the recommendation here? We test immediately before welding starts, uh, not two hours before. Use uh, portable gas detector alarms during the welding. So these are some immediate uh, first layer uh, technical recommendation that we can use. In order to prevent uh, this event, we have some recommendation that cover the drain with the metal or other flame resistant sheets. So this one is related to the technical recommendation. So similarly, you just keep going until you reach your final outcomes. Now, again, it depends uh, which event uh, you bring first. However, you need to identify the sequence of events, how this one is happening, and then put your recommendations over this. Folks, we have uh, another model, which is the loss causation model. It is uh, similar to the domino theory, but there are some differences. So it identify the lack of uh, control and identify the basic causes. And then what are the immediate uh, causes and then lead to the incident and the loss or the accident. It is a modification of the domino theory. Early part of the causal chain of the domino model has been replaced by management factors. As I mentioned, there is slight changes uh, to domino theory to evaluate how these affect to the likelihood of unsafe effect and condition. The analysis uh, begins with the loss or the harm. A failure at any level in the model can result in the propagation to loss. So I believe now you understand what is the propagation means here. This, this was the second uh, stage in an accident model. In the STEMP approach, uh, an accident uh, in complex system do not simply occur due to independent component failure. So if there is a one component failure, the accident cannot happen rather than they occur when external disturbance is not adequately handled by the control system. Some basic con concept in uh, STEMP is constraint rather than an event. The process that causes accident can be understood uh, in terms of flaws in the control loops between system components during design, development, manufacturing and operations. So we can understand system flaws when we are designing our system, developing our system, manufacturing and operations. How uh, STEMP is different from other accident model? The basic uh, difference is the is, is constraints actually. In the traditional accident models, uh, explain uh, accident causes in terms of series of events, whereas the STEMP views accident as a result of the lack of constraints, which is the control loss imposed on the system design and during uh, the operational development. That's how the STEMP is differentiated from your traditional accident models. Oops, I will stop it here and I will take your questions. Folks, I'm going to unmute you so that you can ask me your questions. And if you're not asking question, please keep yourself muted.
Okay, sir, do you have any questions uh, regarding today's lecture or anything which is not clear you want me to explain again? I can do that. 